Um, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, let's go ahead and start this regular session by roll, roll call. <clears throat> Mayor Bagley. Here. Council Member Christensen. Here. Council Member Hidalgo Faring. Here. Council Member Martin. Here. Council Member Peck. Here. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Council Member Waters. Here. Mary of a quorum. All right, great. Let's start with the pledge. Um, Joan, you want to start us? Sure. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the republic, republic for which, for which, which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, just a quick reminder to the public, anyone wishing to provide public comment during the public invited to be heard must watch the live stream of the meeting and call in only when the meeting is open for public comment. Um, you can't, callers are not able to access the meeting at any other time. Um, that is the call in, that is the call in information. We will go ahead and put that up when it comes time for first call public invited to be heard. When you call in, wait patiently and you'll be called by the last three or four digits of your phone number. All right, let's move on to section or item four, approval of minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the December 1st, 2020 regular session minutes? I will move. All right, I'll second that. Um, it was moved by Dr. Waters, seconded by myself. Any comment? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of approving the December 1st, 2020 regular session minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, any agenda revisions or submission of documents or motions to direct the city manager for future agenda items? All right, I, was, I thought we got away with it. Councilmember Christensen. <laughs> no, I'm just a, I'm going to ask, uh, last week we um, approved giving some money to the Northern Arapaho. I'm wondering when that's going to happen or when it's coming back. I'm gonna need you all to make some motions during city manager, um, city manager uh, report on that very issue and then on carryover. Have we had a chance to have we had a chance to talk to or communicate with the business council yet? We haven't had a chance, but we're gonna go ahead and ask you to do that. All right, we'll do that tomorrow then. We, we need to get some I need to chat with you about getting numbers so that all right, we'll just we'll just we'll handle Polly, that'll happen tomorrow, I promise. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Good. All right. All right. Um, let's go ahead. City manager's report. Update on COVID nineteen. How are we doing? Um, we're doing well. I've actually got a, a few things to talk to you about, about changes that have occurred at the state level and then CARES funding. But the first item that I wanted to talk to you about is actually the five the 5,000 that you wanted to appropriate appropriate to the appro Arapaho Nation. So I need council to make a motion and direct that so we can get that in the budget process. Councilmember Christensen. I would move that um, the city manager and city staff um, donate $5,000 to the Northern Arapaho tribe to use in the way they see most fit for, to help uh, their nation during COVID. Thank you. I'll second it. You're muted, but I, I read your lips, Mayor. Yes, yes, Councilmember Member Peck. So, um, uh, Councilwoman Christensen, did you want that to come out of the council contingency fund? Yes, sorry, I meant to mention that. I mean, from the council contingency fund. Okay. All right, the motion is to instruct staff to move forward by allocating $5,000 out of the council con contingency fund um, in order to apply it to assist the Northern Arapaho tribe in their, uh, cur their current needs uh, given the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Harold, still Mayor Council, I, I also need another motion um, from Council to carry over the remaining amount from your contingency fund into 2021. So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. How much is in there right now, Harold? Let me go to the. Do you want me to shoot that? Hit? 762,000. Okay, cool. Plus, 
plus 40,000 that we would hope to reimburse from CARES money. Okay, so 100,000? 102,000. Looks like we're gonna have a cool birthday party for one of us. All right, well, that's a joke, by the way. Don't everybody laugh. I mean, come on. I mean, I've been trying for nine years now. All right. Casa Bonita. Casa Bonita. <laughs> if they open again. It's closed. That's right. All right. So, uh, Harold, do you have anything else to report with COVID? Yeah, I've got a few things. Um, Don, you want to jump in and t help us um, talk through the liquor fee issue? We've had some changes at the state, and since this is the last meeting, um, we want to get some direction from you all that we can pass on to the judge and the liquor authority. Don? Thank you, Harold. Um, yeah, Mayor and Council, during the special session that was held by the state legislature, they passed a bill, um, 20B-001, that waives um, a whole bunch of liquor licensing fee fees for the next year from December 7th, 2020 to December 7th, 2021. Um, liquor fees, uh, it's a dual process, so there are liquor licensing fees paid to the state and fees paid to the city. The state can only waive their fees. They can't waive our local fees. So the question is, would council like for us to follow suit uh, and waive? There are certain license types. It's mostly on-premise licenses. So like restaurants, those kinds of um, licensees. And it's for specific types of applications, renewals. So in the next year, generally, bar, uh, bars and restaurants would not have to pay any fee in order to renew their license as a way to help them um, to recover. So the question is, would council like for us to do the same for the same time period? Uh, the way we would do that is the, the licensing authority, which is Judge Frick, he would um, then write an order to amend our fees, but we wanted to ask for council direction first. I think that's a great idea. Councilor Christensen, you're muted, Polly. You're still muted. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful way to help our businesses just a little bit, uh, restaurants and um, things. So I'd say. All right. Yeah, you can take mine as a so moved. That was so I made the motion. Councilman Christensen seconded it. Dr. Waters. Uh, it just would be helpful to know um, what, what I, how many dollars is that in terms of lost revenues or deferred revenues? Not that, not that I don't support the idea. Just I'm just curious when I vote yes. I'm voting yes to, to forego X number of dollars in, in fees. And I, and I do recall from Jim Golden that, that that fees account for about $4 million of our revenue shortfalls in 2020. Um, so so how, how much are we going to add to that? This, one, this one's about $20,000. Um, and we have some ability with some of the, the way we're working. I think the CARES funds. It comes in for pandemic, so twenty thousand. All right, thank you. All right, all in favor, say aye. Aye, aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, that motion carries unanimously. Thanks, Don. Good idea. Thank you. Um, last part, or I've got two more pieces. The other was related to the CARES funding that I talked to council about. So, if you remember, we allocated um, CARES funding to business assistance, child care assistance health and human service funding, um, any number of things. We are screaming into the end of the year. If council will remember, we have to have all of those expenses, and we have to have all of that done by the end of the year. And what I mean done is it has to be expended or we have to have purchased what we need in there. Um, one of the things that we've done as we've been moving through this, we were, um, we had some of the, the internal funds that were that we were really focused on with, within the organization. We've had some reallocations occur um, based on some other funding that came in for testing sites from the county and these other places. And that amounted to about 87,196. Um, we moved the city's funding from there into the business assistance grant process, which allowed us to assist about 88 businesses within the community, we had approximately 150 that were requesting, so there's still quite a few. When we started looking at the health and the money that we were putting into um, health and human service funding and really the grants for the nonprofit agencies, we started running into some, into some issues. And the same thing actually occurred 
on the business assistance side and even with some of the child care grants in that you get caught up into this funding source in terms of the dupli federal duplication of benefits. So if any of these groups applied for the PPP loans or received any other federal funding, then it started conflicting in the duplication of benefits. The other thing we were seeing in our nonprofit groups is there was a lot of money funneling into that world via the county, the city, the state. And so when we went through that, we've realized that of the 254,000 that we put into that arena, when you look at the ability to spend it, federal duplication of benefits, and then the conversations that we've had with DOLA on the accounting piece, we're only probably going to be able to allocate 160,000, which leaves about another 94,000 out in the process. Um, and what I, we were, what I was gonna recommend to you all is that we move that into the boost business grants because they're the easiest to, to spend pretty quickly in the amount of time that we have. Um, the other thing that we've been really working on is um, the utility assistance grants. And so with the work that they're doing at the Hour Center and the work that we're doing internal with our utility assistance piece, um, we, um, we've identified that we, we're going to have about 90,000 that um, our center has moved over to us, of which 50,000 we've moved into the utility assistance piece that we're managing, which leaves about 40,000 that we need to reallocate. Again, we're recommending that go into the business boost grants because it's the easiest and the fastest to expend. So that would add uh, between those two um, pieces um, another 134,000 to the business grants. Um, what what we've heard and what I've heard from Peter in this and Peter's on the line. If you have any questions, is that would um, get us close to it being able to assist um, approximately 100 businesses locally um, with the boost business grants that, that we're putting into the community. And if you're interested, we have a map geographically through the community. Obviously we're putting them through our social equity lens as we were looking through this and had a diverse panel um, review it. If council is in agreement with that, then as we're continuing to get to the end of this, we know we're gonna have money available here and there. So we've then structured a process that we can move those funds into boost pay for PPE, disinfecting of the city facilities. We have PrimeGov go bags that's for our staff to be able to work, um, work from home, um, some work in the museum so they can continue to do virtual productions. And then the pandemic pay line item that we have within our organization. So those will be things we'll have to move the money into as we're sliding in just based on timeline. So I know I went over this pretty quickly, but as you can see, um, the big move is if we can't spend it, moving it into the business grants, then looking at some of the other items within our structure so that we can ensure the funding is, it, we capture 100% of the funding locally. All right, great. Is that it, Harold? I think there's a question. Oh, sorry, Dr. Waters. I, your, I just bright, was, your bright red have... sweater was not was just hey. not capturing the, the yeah, visual, sorry. Um, uh, do, you need, do you need a motion on any of that, Harold? Um, if I can just get direction or consensus from council that we move in, in moving the funds as I described, I think that would help me. Right. So you, you don't need a motion I'm, for me, I'll give you a thumbs well, up. If you want to give a motion, I'm, a motion will work too. Well, then I'll move that we authorize Harold to make the adjustments in the CARES funding in ways that he just described. Second. Okay. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Waters and seconded by Councilmember Peck that staff proceed with the direction that uh, Harold just described. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say nay. All right, you've got your direction, Harold. Thank you. All right. Uh, Hold on one second, Councilmember Peck. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Harold, are you finished with your update? Um, I've got, I was going to go over the COVID numbers, but if there's something else that I can answer. Um, I was just curious, and it does have to do with COVID. Have you uh, heard anything about the eviction uh, mandate uh, being lifted? You know, I haven't, about evicting. I haven't heard anything. Um, 
what I can say is that we were actually talking to the Boulder County folks that do this and they were still talking about the fact that it's only in extreme circumstances when I'm seeing something pop across the screen. Um, hold on, somebody's answering. Nope, they're not. Um, I haven't seen that they're gonna change that. Sandy, can you jump on and see if you've heard anything from the state level on this one or Karen? Yep, you got it. Yep, we're okay. as okay. is. And it's only in extreme circumstances. I, we've had to deal with one recently and it's really safety to the other residents in the facility. Um, and, and the threshold is really, really high and it really turns in, it's a, it's a fundamental safety issue. Okay, thank you. All right, Harold, anything else? Yep, COVID. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try to blaze through this as fast as I can, but there's actually some good numbers, some good information in this that um, I wanted to share with you all. So um, can you all see? Um, yes, we can. Hold on a second, I'm having technical issues. On my side. Bear with me a second. All right, so um, this is the information that I've received from Jeff Zayag today. He presented it yesterday to our county administrators meeting. Um, as, as we move through this, um, obviously we're gonna be focusing on the CDPHE dial and mitigation metrics. Um, when you look at this, so the first thing you can obviously see that we're at 572.5 per 100,000. I will tell you that um, that number was based on Monday. If you um, were to go to the dashboard now, it's actually 526. So we're continuing to move and in a good direction in terms of that number. Um, and, and keep track of these numbers because they've consolidated into some comparisons for um, our other counties. Uh, when you look at the county rate, you can see here that it's um, 6.4. Um, I think that on the state's website, that rate has now moved to approximately um, six, it's at six um, versus the 6.4 that we had on Monday. So again, still seeing really um, good movement in terms of Boulder County. And then obviously where we sit um, in the eight to 11 days, we're at 11 days um, of decreasing our stable admissions in Boulder County. Um, when you look at the hospital surge metrics for level purple, you can see that we are starting to see some differences and you'll see this when we get into the hospital numbers where now one of five Boulder County hospitals are reporting anticipated staffing shortage. I think last week that was two. Um, and then when you read, see the hospitals approaching 90% of the reported surge, um, you can see that zero of five are anticipating ICU bed shortages this week. Two of five are still reporting transfer capability and tight ICU capability. So we're continuing to see that. So they're not accepting transfers from any source. Um, health systems are then reaching out to each other for assistance when, they, when we have um, situations in our rural partners. So again, still really sitting there. And I think that's a broader impact. Harold, yeah. it, it, would it be possible next week to get the Delta of this time last year? Because I don't, I'm having a hard time understanding if those numbers are bad. I mean, 68% of the ICU beds bad. I mean, it's a lot better than it was two weeks ago, but I'd like to know in the non COVID year, what are these numbers? Yeah, we the, can get that. We can the Delta, have the county the Delta, get that for us. The Delta is the information that tells the story. Right. And we'll have the county um, get that for us. Thank you. Um, and so went over that. I'm missing a slide. Something's happening with this, but I'll, when we get out of this, I'll tell you what we're seeing in our neighboring counties based on that. So when you look at the numbers here, I think obviously we're just looking at the, the trend and the graph and, and, and what we're seeing. Um, the big piece is that we've actually had two days under 100, fours with over 100, and we've had one with 200, which is much better than we've been seeing recently. 
Um, again, we're still seeing a fair number of cases associated with long-term care facilities and the numbers that we're putting together when we had the 25, seven, seven of those was in our long-term care. Um, and, and so those are the, the outbreaks that they're still working on in terms of then the asymptomatic transmission that's occurring in those long-term care facilities. Um, when you look at this, this is really the, and the other slides we've been looking at two week cumulative incidents, two week average positivity. positivity. Um, currently our five day rolling average is about 103 cases by, per day. Um, this has decreased a lot since last Tuesday when the average was 129. We're actually well below half the average cases when we were at the peak um, recently. So again, continuing to see good movement. Um, over the past three weeks, uh, the new case rates in all metro counties have been dropping, um, but are still higher than any time before the re recent surge. As you can see, Boulder, um, the red line is lower than all counties, but Broomfield in terms of the new case rate per 100,000, but we're very close to Broomfield and obviously our population is much different as, as we're continuing to, to move forward. Um, this is actually this, this slide I was looking for. I thought it was over. When you look at the dial metrics, and so when you remember me talking about 526 and 6%, what they've said is when you look at it um, in Weld and Larimer County, so we're at 526, Weld's at 1,018. Larimer's at 784. The two-week average positivity in Weld is 14.6, 10.5 in Larimer, and then uh, 10, 10 days for hospitalization, eight days in Larimer. So if you remember those numbers I talked about on the dial recently, that's how it, we're comparing to those other counties. Um, now we're going to get into the Boulder County numbers. Um, you know, in, the, in Boulder County, while we're, while we're uh, performing better than other counties, in Boulder County, Longmont is not performing as well as the counties as a whole. Um, since November uh, 1, um, we've had the highest case rate per 100,000 um, in Boulder County. Um, again, we've talked about the Lions case rates in terms of what we're seeing. This is what it looks like when we break it down. Now, the good news is we're all of these are continuing to trend down in terms of the county, but when you look at the relativity of this, we're staying pretty consistent in terms of where the number of cases are coming from. Um, Boulder had 212 um, in the last week, Boulder had 212 cases, Longmont had 407 cases, Louisville, Lafayette, Superior had 127, and then the other municipalities had 101. So those and um, we continue to need to be very diligent in our community. The past seven days, 25% of our new cases are from Boulder and 48% are from Longmont. So we're gonna continue working our public information campaign on this issue. Um, again, um, highest cumulative rates in, uh, per 100,000, 18 to 22, 23 to 24, and then 25 to 34. Um, in terms of children, you know, the, the good news is that the case rates have decreased for every age group over the past two weeks compared to the previous two weeks, except uh, five to nine year olds where it remained the same. Finally, when we look at this and we see the case rates um, continue, now we're seeing the case rates um, decrease among all age groups um, over the past two weeks compared to the previous two weeks two weeks where we were seeing that diverge in that 75 um, plus age group. And then again, 76.2% have no in race and ethnicity. Um, and we continue to see large disparities in our Hispanic Latinx population. When you get into the next slide, Again, the good news is we're seeing the cases go down, but we're not seeing a change in the absolute or relative disparity for the Hispanic Latinx community members um, in terms of what that looks like in week to week. And, and as Jeff indicated, we're continuing to try to focus um, and communicate um, with that segment of our population. Um, when we get into this, here's where the numbers start seeing look a lot better. So the five-day average on November 1 was 6.5%. The five-day average 
um, based on this was 5.2%. Um, again, you can see the number of tests that we have in play and the number of positives. Really still what this is showing they could, the, is the ability to, to perform a lot of tests, which is what we're still looking for. And then this is where you can see the five day rolling average on the percent on the percentage of positive tests in Boulder County. Again, still seeing really good trends in, in this area. Um, the data is presented through 1211 due to an approximately three day lag between the time a test is conducted and when the results are reported to CDPHE. Again, this is just another example where we're seeing the that trend down um, in, in the data, and you're gonna see it again here uh, in the seven day rolling average percentage. So we're just seeing everything. There may be a question today, are we seeing this on our wastewater data? Um, we're, we're seeing that move in the same direction that Dale talked about um, during the last meeting. Hopefully the state's gonna make that public and we'll be able to show you that um, when we have our next council meeting at the beginning of the year. To the mayor's point in terms of hospitalizations, this is again a cum cumulative look at hospitalizations. This is the dial where we're seeing where we are and what it looks like. It, it, this is also improving. Um, in terms of the cases that we were seeing today, if you bear with me, let me pull up another chart to give you those numbers in terms of what we were seeing. Um, as of earlier today, See, Danny. Um, we had 75 hospitalizations in the county, 24 in Longmont. Yesterday we had 84. Um, it's been vacillating a little bit, but it is going down from where we were in terms of the number of hospitalizations in Boulder County. Uh, Longmont's remained pretty steady in, in that, let's say, 20 to 25 range. This is the graph that really shows what we've been seeing. So again, good movement, but you can see that bounce, where it bounced a little bit. Um, this one was the one with 85 people. Um, so then obviously when it gets reported based on what we're seeing today, then it'll, it'll drop back down um, to approximately right where the pointer is here based on what we're seeing today. Um, and again, this is what the hospitals are looking like statewide. Um, unfortunately, so this is a lagging indicator in terms of death. So you're actually seeing that, or we're, we're seeing more deaths. So that's obviously attributed to the number of cases, number of hospitalizations. And this is really the, the lagging indicator in terms of what everyone's evaluating. And then emergency room, we're, we're, they were starting to track flu. So we've actually had 11 hospitalizations in terms of flu, but no outbreaks in long-term care facilities, no pediatric deaths. Um, related to the flu. Um, and again, when you look at the emergency department visits, and we'll try to get a baseline on this for, um, for the council at the next meeting, you can see that um, diagnosed flu is still really low. People coming in with COVID related systems, we can see that peak matching the data peak and it's starting to trend down. So we're seeing that move in the direction that we want. And then total ED visits are starting to decrease. Um, and again, emergency department visits by county, you can see where we, we had a dip, but then we went back, but we're still performing really well compared to other counties in, um, in the state of Colorado. In terms of the social distancing update, so this is pretty, this is an interesting piece of information that we're going to start trying to work in to our wastewater data to try to get a different look. So. 48% um, social distancing, seven day average in the state of Colorado. What's really interesting is when you look at Boulder County um, and we're at 56%. Um, and so when we look at when we were at the stay at home order, it was 86%. We then decreased in April to 53% in July. And then we went to 41% in October, but now we're back up to 56%. We're starting to see that where we can relate the, the um, time at home. That graph, we're gonna try to figure that out as it relates to the case numbers and as it relates to some of what we're seeing in our uh, wastewater, uh, because you can definitely see that connection in terms of the movement um, and a shift in the numbers. Um, and then Boulder residents are staying at home 
less in the spring, but more than October. So again, that's starting to correlate with what we're seeing in the cases um, in the community. Uh, and again, we have all of these data resources. I'll work with Marika to send you out the full slide deck as, as we're going over this. Um, I know I went through it pretty quick. If you all have any questions, I'll be happy to answer that. Councilmember Peck. So Harold, thank you, uh, Mayor Bagley. Um, I was trying to work out the percentages here based upon population. For example, um, we have uh, like 525 um, out new virus infections, or we're, we're down to that. Did I understand that correctly? So we have a, like about a 2% a infection rate. So uh, let, me get that, let me get that for you because it depends on the date range. And so we'll talk to Dan about getting that. So in the last week, so for example, in the last week, Boulder had 200, we had 407 cases in the last week, but there's more to it than just the, what I've learned, just the division of the cases by the population. And so let us reach out to um, Boulder County Health to see if we can get that number for you all. Because I would like to compare that to based upon population, the percentage for Weld and Larimer since they have uh, triple the population that we've got. Uh, I would just like to see what the comparison is. Um, so the outbreak. We have a, a different website to answer that question. So let me share a different screen with you all right now. Okay. So if you look at this screen. Um, this may be some help to you all, it's loading slow. So, when you look at Boulder, um, confirmed by 100 so we've had 13,000 confirmed cases with 140 deaths. And then you can click on this other, so this is the John Hopkins um, that does it by county. Um, and so then generally you can, um, so then this shows the population um, Boulder County, slightly over 300,000. You can see the breakdown. Um, but this compares it, so then we can go back here. And so then when you go to, for example, Weld, they've had 17,000 confirmed cases, 241 deaths. Um, and then you can look at the details behind their demographics. And um, I'm slowing down here at the house now because the kids are home. <laughs> you can see slightly lower population and well than in Longmont, but the higher case number. So let us work with Jeff. Okay, that would be great. Because there's some nuances in the way they calculate it, and I want to make sure we have the accurate numbers for you all. Okay, thank you. That's a good site to go to. I use that to compare across different counties and, and, and looking at how we're performing in this John Hawkins side. Councilmember Waters. Uh, thanks, Mayor Bagley. Harold, three questions real quickly. Um, uh, what's the source of the data for the social distancing, the 48, 56%, where do those data come from? Um, the, the state, they do different scenarios, but a lot of it is so from cell phone data. So you know how when you go into your cell phone and go, I want to go from here to, let's say, I want to go here from here to Denver, give me the fastest way, and it's pulling the cell phone data to see where it's slowing down. It, that's a part of the, the aggregate mobility data in terms of what they're seeing. Um, again, it can't tell me what I'm doing, but they're just kind of seeing the movement. That's a piece of it. Um, and, and I can get the rest of the details, but I know so that's- So it's just the, the proximate distance of one cell phone to another. 
Got it, what are you saying? Cell phone, cell phone movement. If you remember when Jeff presented to you earlier, they were even saying trips to grocery stores, trips to parks. It was really just using that aggregate data from cell phone to tell us where we were going and how we were spending our time. Assuming you're carrying your cell phone, right? Assuming you're carrying it right. All right. Um, so that's that's not as precise as some of the other metrics that we're looking at or indicators. Um, uh, when you when we just look at the counts, numbers of whether it's cases or hospitalizations, and we see it by county, is that by county of residence or county of where it's diagnosed or treated? Residence is the way it's supposed to be reported. So if I if I lived in Larimer County, but I got diagnosed here, I think that has to go to Larimer County is the way it's been explained to me. So a Longmont resident living in Weld County is accounted for in the Weld County data, not the, not the Boulder County data. Correct, and that's part of what Erie's had to deal with because Erie- Yeah, it's dead right down the middle. Lines. And Last question, um, uh, I was hoping we might see some of the, uh, the kind of the predictive model at work of our wastewater testing. Um, how far away are we from seeing the results? We're just, we're just waiting for the state to push that out public and we think we'll, we'll be there on the first, the first meeting in January, hopefully. Correct, Dale? And, and it's just a matter of validating the predictive model that you developed? Correct. All right, thanks. But what I can tell you is we're seeing, the movement we're seeing there it is is showing the movement we're seeing in cases um, and it's continuing to move in a way that we would want to see it generally. All right, thanks. All right, is that it, Harold? All right, perfect. Let's go ahead then and take a three minute break while we load up the first call public invited to be heard if there are no more special reports. So back in three, guys. Okay, folks, now is the time to call in during our public invited to be heard part of our agenda. When you dial in, you will be put into a, a waiting room and then we'll let you into the meeting. Please make sure that you do mute the live stream. Otherwise, you will be hearing a 30 second delay. So again, Let's uh, have you call in and we'll get you into the meeting. Thanks.
So again, welcome to those folks that just called in. We will get started here shortly. Once we do come back to the meeting, I will be calling out your phone number by the last three digits and asking you to unmute at that time. Please make sure that you do mute the live stream or you won't be hearing my prompt. You'll be about 20 to 30 seconds uh, delayed. So make sure that you do mute that live stream. Thanks folks. All right, how are we looking? Two of us, three of us, four of us, five. Mayor, we do have several callers. I'm just gonna wait for the live stream to catch up with us here and- How many, several? Let me give that a count. One, two, three, four, five, looks like six. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's just wait for Polly. Oh, there's Polly. Let's wait for Susie. There's Susie. All right. And let's go ahead and start it up. I'll get the timer going. All right. We're going to call out the first caller. Your phone number ends in 414. 414, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Please state your name and address for the record. Are you there, 414? Hello. Uh, you're coming in as a different ID. I'm still looking for 414. This is four. There you are. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. You may begin. Please state your name and address for the record. Sharon O'Leary, 534 Emory Street. Mayor Bagley and council members, I am here tonight as co-chair for historic Eastside neighborhood, Longmont's oldest neighborhood. With the onset of 2021, Longmont will turn 150 years young. We would like to ask you to put historic preservation on your agenda for the city council's annual retreat. What a perfect opportunity to plan and support preservation as a birthday gift to future generations of Longmont citizens. Presently, Longmont's planning department half-time preservation planner was reduced to a quarter time. We have a perfect gift suggestion. In celebration, give the planning department a full-time preservation planner for one year. The gift of a full-time planner for one year will allow the planning department to complete unfinished work, update preservation files, develop architectural guideline suggestions, and dedicate time to grant writing assistance, which could support neighborhoods and businesses. For many years, the historic Eastside neighborhood has worked very hard as gatekeepers to preserve Longmont's oldest neighborhood. We are a reflection of Longmont's beginning. The West Side neighborhood is a reflection of Longmont as citizens and businesses were successful. And other neighborhoods 50 years or older reflect Longmont's continual growth. Every year that a home gets older, Longmont could be adding to potential historic inventory. What a great gift to Longmont if council made this a priority. Future generations will truly, truly benefit from the gift of a one year full time preservation planner. Please seriously consider the gift of a full time planner for one year. 
I greatly appreciate all you do for the citizens of Longmont. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Larry. All right, next caller. All right, the next caller, your phone number ends in 488. 488, there, there you go. Okay. Hi, this is, uh, this is Scott Cunningham. I reside at 3771 South Narcissus Way in Denver, and I'm a practicing internal medicine physician, as I think you all know. I wanted to start by congratulating the council on voting to begin implementation of recommendations from the Citizen Climate Action Committee, including possible deployment of some type of smart metering system which potentially brings the city closer to its laudable goal of sustainability. I want to again remind the council of the great body of scientific, clinical, and medical evidence of the harms of radio frequency radiation inherent in the wireless variety of smart meters, such as the AMI meters, which have now become obsolete, but which are still occasionally offered to municipalities in a misguided effort to reduce the cost of energy. Aside from the well-documented, important, and serious health issues associated with these wireless smart meters, since there's no proven energy savings in these outdated meters whatsoever, I, suge I suggest that the council begin an aggressive search for a safer wired smart meter that can be embedded into a truly sustainable energy production and management system that's capable of reducing costs, as well as avoiding the predictable uptick in chronic and acute illnesses we would see with the unconscionable deployment of these wireless smart meters. Now, I know that the council is focused on reducing the cost of energy and for good reason. You've been charged by your community with stewarding the currently extremely limited resources the average member of your community has access to, the advantage of leveraging a wired smart meter in addition to potential cost benefits to the community is its inherently superior safety profile. Also, since obviously insurers are refusing to insure these dangerous wireless devices, the city won't be required to bear the prohibitive cost of self-insuring against the inevitable injuries that will result from their deployment. Again, congratulations on beginning to move toward a sustainable, market-leading, cost-effective, and above all safe power and communications grid that will truly be admired by municipalities all across the nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doc. All right, next caller. All right, the next caller, your phone number ends in 499. I'm going to ask you to unmute. 499. There you are. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Doe Kelly of Barbary Drive in Longmont. Dear City Council and staff, as we enter this sacred time of the year in so many traditions, in my conviction that we as a community and society are on the wrong path and our headlong rush into even more wireless technology, and of course by this I mean locally, smart meters, I take the time to quote from the homepage of the 5G International Legal Action Network, and I quote, our species is rushing toward a future that feeds our addiction to speed, instant gratification, energy consumption, and disconnection from Earth. By creatively working together, we have a chance to cause a shift. As I'm prohibited from doing my self-employed activities in the manner I was accustomed before the state mask mandates and safer at home guidelines and have therefore become a ward of the state via the gig worker self-employed unemployment insurance thoughtfully brought in to assist folks like me, I've come to think the very least I can do is give back to the state and in particular to my community during this era of hopefully not the great reset as being called forth by Prince Charles, Joe Biden, Klaus Schwab, and Bill Gates, but by raising highly relevant questions and reassessing what's truly important to us in our values as a culture. How, you may be asking, well, obviously, 
by being a bulldog and digging, digging, digging into whatever I can find to hopefully inform, educate, entertain, wheedle, or cajole you to sway your opinions around this smart meter rollout so that if you have no choice but to take a deep second, third, and even fourth look at the potential boondoggle of a $15 million investment that may cause fires, we wouldn't want that, would we, at this time of severe drought in Colorado? Has obvious radiation health risks. Oh, what's a little radiation risk among friends? We're already exposed to the solar radiation at this elevation, not to mention the background radiation from granite mountains and radon in our houses, never mind 5G, 4G, and all the little Gs and a partridge in a pear tree. A $15 million technology that puts the city of Longmont squarely in a position of liability for damages as no insurance provider I know of will cover the risks of this technology and that, again, with a nod to tiny Tim Sheckley, has equipment that will soon be, I repeat, obsolete. And yet, from what I can see, you're all too eager to follow this dangerous path, dangerous because it puts all biological life forms in even more harm's way. I have a lot more to say on the subject, but because I tend to be a little long-winded, my Christmas gift to you is me stopping here to be continued in part two of this diatribe to council next time. Thank Wishing you. you Merry Christmas and a happy holiday. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Next mm -hmm. caller. All right. The next caller, we have you listed as 084. 084. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We sure can. You may begin. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Goldberg. My address is 200 East 23rd Street in Loveland. And appreciate what you all are doing uh, on the council here. I called one of the last meetings where the discussion came up about uh, smart meters, and I made the point, which I'd like to reiterate, that from the time that we wake up in the morning until we go to bed at night, we are already inundated with wireless uh, radiation that is hitting us from all sides, from our cell phones to our electricity to our smart meters to our Wi-Fi and everything in between. And uh, one thing I didn't mention last time is that there are currently the uh, there are satellites getting into the game now. There are currently 864 low orbit satellites above the Earth now, emitting high frequency radiation down to the planet, adding yet another layer of radiation to what we're already experiencing. Um, so smart meters is going to be another layer on top of that. I, I have been doing research since we spoke last time and learning more about them. And I, I do believe, as one of the other callers said, that the, uh, the wired possibility for smart meters does exist. And I believe that you should be able to use your already existing fiber optic network, which is such a great thing that you have in the city, to uh, to if you're going to have smart meters to use those fire op fiber optic cables. I think the best choice would be not to have the smart meters at all because they do, even if they come in on a wired connection, they do emit radiation into everybody's homes. And like I said, that's another layer that has to be dealt with. But if the choice is going to be made to have smart meters, wiring is definitely the way to go. Uh, there, there are those in the utility industry who will tell you that the, the radio wave uh, worries and concerns that we have are way overblown. And that's just not true. There is so much science now, thousands of peer reviewed studies that show the dangers of wireless radiation uh, that actually cause autoimmune responses, very similar to flu symptoms. They are real, they're peer reviewed studies. This is not fringe science whatsoever. It's science that's just, just being ignored by most of the scientific community. 
In closing, I just want to say, it seems like a lot of people okay. will argue that this is the future. I'm going to have to cut you, sir. I'm going to have to cut you off. Future. Okay. But thank and you for your thank you for your comments. And that, thank that, you all. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next okay. caller. Okay. So we have another caller with the same. Nope. They hung up. So that was odd. They came in twice. All right. Our last caller is uh, coming in with Scout as the phone number. So Scout, I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you are. Yes, hi. And uh, I'm not gonna talk about smart meters or chemtrails or Bigfoot, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but uh, my name is John Burroughs. I'm at 3734 Eagle River Drive. Um, I live in, uh, it's technically on the post office Longmont, but it's actually in Weld County in Firestone. So I'd like to give you my perspective from being in Weld County, if you don't mind. Uh, if you look at the Weld County COVID-19 zip code map, it, it's pretty clear where the high cases of COVID are coming from in Weld County. To me, if I just look at that from a scientific perspective, they're coming from Longmont, the city of Longmont. So I, I think it's incredibly arrogant and elitist to consider sending a letter telling Weld County what to do as far as following the protocol when it's clear where the cases are coming from in Weld County. They're clearly, you can just look at it. I, I, I recommend going to Weld County, just type in Weld County COVID zip map, zip code map. They're clearly coming from the Southwest sector straight from Longmont. So just consider, don't don't consider you know your neighboring county as the source of your problem. Maybe consider the problem inside your own county, and you're affecting other counties. If anything, Weld County should be sending you a letter uh, asking for you to do better in your own house. Um, I do a lot of business in the city of Longmont, but I will if this letter that is considered to be sent out. Um, I will take all that business away. So only, the only thing you're accomplishing by this letter, well, the county's not going to do anything different by sending a letter, a strongly worded letter. You're just going to hurt your own businesses. I have kids that go to dance studios there. I go shop there sometimes, frequent the restaurants. But, you know, I want, if you send a letter telling other counties what to do, you know, that, that's just an arrogant, elitist grab for headlines, especially by your mayor there. So that's all I want to say. Reconsider. Don't worry about other counties around you. If anything, the evidence that you shared earlier shows that the numbers are improving and Grand County is actually on your west, western edge. That's even worse than Well County. So just consider the facts. Worry about your own problems. Don't worry about other counties. I live right on the edge of the county, so just wanted to pass that on. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, that's it for uh, First Call Public Invited to be Heard. Let's go on to the consent agenda, uh, the consent agenda. And I guess the, uh, I'm not gonna cut off debate or whatever, but just would like to remind people that um, the consent agenda is so that we all agree that it's a consent agenda. We all pull it off, but nobody's ever opposing anything. So pull it off if you're gonna oppose it. But other than that, if it passes, it passes. Um, superfluous you know, comment as we pass it doesn't really add anything but I'm not gonna stop you. That's just my thoughts. Councilmember Martin. Um, I have some fairly substantive questions about uh, item B. Uh, I have no intention of opposing it, but I would like to get those questions answered because I think they may require corrections. Okay, Dr. Waters. Thanks, Mayor Bagley. Um, I'd like to pull off item 9G. Okay, B and G, Councilmember Christensen. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'd like to pull off item E. All right. Councilor Peck. Question on K, and um, there was another one, but I'll just go with that. Okay. So I'm going to move the consent agenda, less B, E, G, and K. Mayor, would you like me to read that consent agenda oh. before we vote? <laughs> nah, go ahead and read it. All right, thank you. Ordin uh, item 9A is Ordinance 2020 02, 
a bill for an ordinance authorizing a First Amendment to farmland lease agreement between the City of Longmont and Sipe Farms, LLC, on the Newbie Farms open space, public hearing and second reading scheduled for January 12th, 2021. 9B is Ordinance 2021-03, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 16.08 of the Longmont Municipal Code to adopt, by reference, the 2020 edition of the National Electric Code. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for January 12, 2021. 9C is Ordinance 2021-04, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Hangar Parcel H6 to the Shook Family Trust. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for January 12, 2021. 9D is Resolution 2020-133, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving an amended intergovernmental allotment contract between the City of Longmont acting by and through its water utility enterprise and the Windy Gap Firming Project Water Activity Enterprise for capacity in the Wind Windy Gap Firming Project. 9E is Resolution 2020-134, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the City of Longmont Services contract for public, educational, and government access television services. 9F is Resolution 2020-135, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the lease between the city and the Longmont Public Media for the Carnegie Library Building, 457 4th Avenue. 9G is Resolution 2020-136, a resolution of the, Longmont, of the Longmont City Council in support of Governor Jared Polis' temporary restrictions because of COVID-19 and urging neighboring counties to also abide by these restrictions. 9H is approved contracts for economic development services with the following organizations, Colorado Enterprise Fund, Boulder Small Business Development Center, Longmont Economic Development Partnership, and the Latino Chamber. 9I is approved 2021 City of Longmont Water Principles, Colorado Municipal League Policy Statement, and National League of Cities Priorities in Preparation for the 2021 State Legislative Session. 9J is approved three capital improvement program amendments, and 9K is accept 12 capital improvement program amendments approved by the city manager. All right, my motion still stands. Consent agenda less B, E, G, and K. Second. 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 All right, it's been moved by myself, seconded by Council Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion passes unanimously. Let's go ahead and move on to ordinances of second, on second reading and public hearings on the matter. So we're going to go ahead and take a three-minute break. And if you are waiting to discuss uh, any of the item 10 ordinances on second reading, go ahead and call in now and uh, get in line to um, uh, have your say during the public hearing. So we'll be back in three.
All right, Don, do we have anybody online? Mayor, we do not. Okay, let's fly through this then. Give us just a minute and uh, the stream will catch up to us. Okay. And we're still missing a few council. All right, and it looks like you're back. All right, let's go ahead and move with, uh, go ahead on with item 10A. This is an, a second reading for ordinance 2020-65, a bill for an ordinance making additional appropriations for the expenses and liabilities of the city of Longmont for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020. Um, were there any questions from council? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and open and close the public hearing as nobody called in. Um, can we have a motion? I will move ordinance 2020-65. Second. It was moved by myself and seconded by council member Christensen. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed, say nay. All right, uh, ordinance 2020-65 uh, passes unanimously. Item 10B, Ordinance 2020-66, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 3.04610, paid holidays designated uh, the Longmont Municipal Code on person personnel rules. Are there any questions from Council? All right, seeing none, we're going to go ahead and open and close the public hearing. Council Member Christensen. I would move passage of Ordinance 2020-66. Second. All right, it's been moved by Councilmember Christensen and seconded by Councilmember Waters. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Ordinance 2020-66 passes unanimously. Ordinance 2020-67, a bill for an ordinance amending chapters, chapter 14.08 of the Longmont Municipal Code by adding section 14.08.647 to allow for adjustment to wastewater billing for commercial and industrial use of cooling water. Are there any questions by Council? All right, seeing none, we'll open and close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Still moved. All right, Count, I'll Sorry, second okay. it. All right, Council Member Peck uh, moved. Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez seconded. Ordinance 2020 62nd, or 67, excuse me. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion passes unanimously. Ordinance 2020-69, a bill for an ordinance designating James and Francis Wiggins House at 534 Emory Street as a local historic man landmark. Any questions or discussion on this matter? All right, seeing none, we'll open and close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? I'll move okay. ordinance 2020-69. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Waters, second by Councilmember Mar Martin. All in favor of ordinance 2020-69, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Ordinance 2020-69 passes unanimously. Ordinance 2020-70, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the city of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel NHT2 to KLMO Hangar Gang. Any questions or discussion from council? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and open and close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? I move item E. Ten, yep. I'll go ahead and second ordinance 2020, the passage of ordinance 2020-70. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, ordinance 2020-70 passes unanimously. And then finally, ordinance 2020-71, a bill for an ordinance repealing and reenacting chapter 11.04 of the Longmont Municipal Code regarding the model traffic code and adopting the 2020 edition of the model traffic code for Colorado by reference. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll open and close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? I'll move ordinance 2020-71. Second. Uh, uh, Tim Water, or Doc, Council Member Waters uh, moved. Council Member Dago Faring seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, ordinance 2020-71 passes unanimously. Let's go ahead and move back to consent agenda. Let's go ahead with B. Um, I believe, who, who, Council Member Martin? Yes, thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, I just have a question and uh, a comment. Uh, I think that there is a typographical error in the second uh, amendment. Um, unfortunately, the 
city covers it up every time um, every time we do okay uh, so in the in the second italicized paragraph which is I think an amendment by the city uh, there's a typographical error where three words are run together or else two words are in, are separated by a space instead of I uh, on the last line. Sorry, that is... Um, it's in line 10. It says, including the space. What page of the ordinance, Council Member Martin? Um, page three. It's page three of the ordinance, line 10. Got it. Okay. And I'm not sure what it should be, including the space. It could be several things, but... It probably should be corrected before it's accepted. We can make that correction for second reading. Okay, thank you. Isn't this second reading? This is oh, the no, consent no, agenda. This is the consent agenda, excuse me. Um, and then the, the next question I have is, um, are these two sections, uh, that is section four, and um, section F, I get I, it's it's hard for me to tell what the organization is from the what's in in the packet. Um, are these the only changes in the whole code section from 2017 to 2020, or um, are these just exceptions to the 2020 code? Um, that Longmont is making from the standard code. Mayor Bagley, member, uh, Council Member Martin, um, I would ask Bloss if he could turn his camera on and answer that question because um, I am not uh, able to do that. So Bloss, if you could turn on your camera and respond to that question. Okay, I finally got it. Um, okay, so the amendments before you for the uh, 2020 NEC are amendments for this specific code. There are existing amendments, but I wasn't involved with those. Those are currently carrying through to the, to the new code. The new amendments that we introduced are safety amendments. These amendments make the NEC more restrictive, not less restrictive. We are not at liberty to make codes less restrictive. Uh, this code has been adopted by the state of Colorado. So we do have to maintain uh, the same code that they maintain. However, if we choose to make them more restrictive, they don't normally have a problem with that. The, these amendments have to do with safety and they and we're talking about outlets that are on ground faults that prevent a person from being shot in a bathroom that's the first one and then the sec the second one would be uh, a disconnecting means for power so that the emergency responders can find the disconnect and easily disconnect the power if they have to those have to be located outside of the building and then the third amendment has to do, again, with receptacles. These are receptacles located outside of a building. A lot of them are getting too close to the ground and they're, they're shorting out because of the snow and rain. So we're requiring those uh, receptacles to be raised off the ground to make them more safe. That pretty much uh, covers what we're trying to accomplish with these amendments to the 2020 NEC. Yeah, I actually wasn't questioning the substance of the amendments. They look fine. Um, what I was asking was, are these three elements the only things that change, period, between 
2017 and 2020, or is there a much larger document somewhere that we don't have a link to? No. Now you, um, council member, these, uh, these are the only amendments that uh, we created for this specific code. So there are no other co uh, amendments out there other than the ones that have been on the books from the past adoptions we have done. And I think those are, we may have two or three other safety amendments that we created previously. So all in all, I would say there's about maybe seven amendments altogether. Uh, we try to keep this very small, but we did, we did uh, find these hazards in homes and in businesses. So that's the reason we created these amendments. So it's a very small group of amendments, not, not anything significant. Or I'm sorry, I'm still not hearing the answer to my question. I'm not asking about how many amendments there are. I'm asking about where the full 2020 code lies. I would like to look at it. You would like to look at the, uh, the actual NEC code? I'd just like to know where it is, yes. Okay, we, there, we, we are going to provide a copy to the city attorney who keeps copies of all of the codes we adopt. So uh, those can be viewed by the public if they want to. Those, those are located in the city attorney's office. So it's not online anywhere? No, unfortunately we can't post uh, the NEC online because it is, a, it is copyright protected. Okay, thank you. Um, You're welcome. I move adoption of uh, item B. I'll second that. All right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor of ordinance 2021-03 on first reading, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, ordinance 2021-03 on the consent agenda passes unanimously. All right, let's go ahead and go on to uh, E. Was that you, Joan? No. Who had E? Somebody pat had E. I. All right, Councilmember Christensen. Uh, okay. Um, several months ago, I brought this uh, this um, contract up um, so that people would have a chance to look at the two things that I objected to. I was. This is contract, and um, you know they they are they do not feel that they are getting enough money to begin with. But I have a sol part solution for how they can have less to do and therefore more money available. Um, the two things that I object to the, the Longmont Public Media doing, which they say they must do because it's in the contract are machine transcriptions, which if any of you have looked at those transcriptions, they are not good and they make us look very bad because it is solely done by a machine. No one looks at it. You cannot tell who's talking. There is, uh, well, any of you who know machine transcription know that there's probably a 10% error rated and that's one out of every 10 letters. So. <laughs> or one out of every 10 words, it's, it isn't good. So if all we are willing to pay for is machine transcription, we should drop that from the contract. And secondly, they do something in which they produce an edited, a smaller, a shorter version of the city council meeting. That isn't needed at all. And it, it's furthermore, it's edited. I don't agree the, with the way it's edited. And our city website um, has a very adequate uh, way of doing this where you can take the agenda and you can just click on what's on the agenda and it'll take you straight to the um, point in the um, video stream in which that discussion is happening. So these two things are really completely unnecessary to be in the contract. And I would like to have them both eliminated because they are not only unnecessary, but I think they are, uh, they make the city look bad. So um, I would move that we eliminate 
these two items from the uh, contract and approve the contract otherwise. Councilor Martin. I would strongly oppose removing the uh, AI uh, transcript because its purpose is not to let you read the transcript, it's to uh, search it for keywords and it's very useful for that. I would second this motion if uh, I could get some feedback from maybe an assistant city manager or whoever does this contract and let us know uh, a little more uh, about it. Sorry. Scott Converse is here. You see? There he is. Scott? Scott, is, is anyone, is, does anyone object to having Scott? Technically, we usually don't, but is it okay if we have Scott? Anyone object? All right, Scott, do you have anything to add? regarding the AI transcript and the editing of city council meetings? Well, um, the AI transcript is, it is what Polly says, it's not 100% accurate, uh, but no AI transcript is, but it does get better over time. The more you do it, the better it gets. So each week that we do it, it recognizes more words, it recognizes more stuff than, than it did six months ago, for instance. So. First, second, the AI software itself has been paid for and it's a few hundred dollars a year. So, you know, it's not like it's a huge savings. <laughs> so um, there's not gonna be a whole lot of, of um, from that perspective, a lot of savings. And we have automated a lot of the process of taking the content and um, having the software do it. Basically we drop the videos into folders and the software then um, processes it and dumps that text out and then we attach it to videos when we post them. So in terms of, so that's how the AI stuff works. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. But the impact on the contract from a financial perspective is very minimal. The, um, the uh, edited version of the uh, city council meeting is something that we do each week. It takes, I think about 90 minutes probably. We, what's going on right now, as you guys are speaking, is we are taking notes of what goes on in the meeting and specific things that are relevant, like when you guys take a vote and when there's a particular discussion. And then uh, next week, actually later this week, in about two days, we should have a finished version based on those notes. It's really just, we cut and we paste, we make some transitions and some descriptions of what happens. And we post that by Friday morning. Uh, the reason for that is a whole bunch of other cities do that. So um, we gave some examples of that during the process of uh, bidding for this contract. And you guys decided you wanted that. So there is a Monday meeting we have with the city every Monday, a production meeting. And that is one of the topics uh, is what goes into that and what do you want to go into that? So, you know, you guys have control over it already. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's basically, like I said, about probably a total of two, maybe high end three hours of work on our part per week. Something that you're not being charged for towards your 20 hours as is now, so. All right, thanks we Scott. We can take it out, but there's not a lot. There's really no savings either. Sa Sandy, your, your hand was up. Did you want to say something? Thanks, Mayor. I just wanted to answer Council Member Peck's question. You know, from a staff perspective, both of these things are included, as Scott mentioned, because they were part of the city council's requirements when we first did this contract. This contract is one of the only ones that is exempted from purchasing code because it is council's decision. So it really, it's really up to you what kinds of things you want to see. We could go either way. I would agree that I think some of the AI stuff is searchable, but it also isn't real accurate. So I see both sides of that argument. From a city staff perspective, um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter either way, whatever the council would like to see is fine with us. I personally think that arguing about it is wasting more money than the $200 that we spend to actually pay for the AI software. And anybody who searches it is going to come across and it's going to be pretty obvious when there's an error. So then they can go back and reference the reference, the, the AI transcript. And then, and as far as editing goes, there's a lot of times when 
we're doing mundane stuff or that that people just want to get over it and onto onto the vote or or just to see how things go but um so i i'd vote for for it as is but councilmember christensen well i do i see what uh councilman martin is saying about searchability but i i don't think that that many people used it for that purpose i i assumed that the purpose of that was for the hearing community or the people who have hearing loss would have a transcript but this is not a good transcript for them and um perhaps it is getting smarter but last time i looked it wasn't very smart at all and i don't want something that actually makes things more difficult for the hearing community so that's why i bring this up i don't uh, i i find this <sighs> A bad representation of our city but if the majority of council thinks these are uh, not um, I just find both of these things are not a good reflection of our city um, if we could make our city council meeting shorter we would I think people deserve to see the whole thing they can always scroll over everything and make it shorter for themselves I have many comments about that comment, Polly, but I will be quiet. Um, what about, okay, do you have a motion on the floor, anybody? Yes. I, well, I did move. But there was no we... second. I'm going to go ahead and, I'm just going to go ahead and move uh, right. resolution 2020-134. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor of resolution 2020-134, say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion, the resolution and motion passes unanimously. Councilmember Peck. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. I do have a suggestion for Scott um, because you said this gets smarter every year. Could we uh, see when the contract comes up again, can we have some kind of data that it, that it is better? Because if it isn't getting better, then there is no point in continuing to do this. So um, let's track it and see what we come up with. Thank you. Appropriate response. Thumbs up, Scott. Thank you. All right, let's go on to item, uh, let's let's skip G. Let's go on to K real quick. Pa uh, Council Mayor Peck. Yes, that too. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, actually, I just have a couple of questions on this. There are the 12, uh, well, there were nine, I guess, on our council co communication. And I'm looking at ELE 097, the, e, uh, the electric aid to construction. So my question is in the council communication, we were talking about the HVAC system for some of our municipal buildings. Um, so my question here is, is this available to uh, construction only? Is it only available to the city? Is it available to other construction? Is it only available to commercial or is residential uh, allowed in this as well, in this amendment? If I'm understanding uh, it at all. Count, Council Member Peck and Mayor Bagley, uh, you know, since this is an operational question, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to defer to a member of the department if we have one um, on the, on the meeting, in the meeting. Okay. Or perhaps even Dale. Yep. So I think part of, Councilman Peck, if I can help with this question, are you asking what the intent of the fund is? I, I am, and, and who gets to actually use this fund? Because unless I misunderstood the council comm, it was uh, used for HVAC system in municipal buildings. So is this goes beyond the city construction or CIP projects? Or is it only for city? Am I making any sense, Harold, at all? Bill, do you want to jump in and then I can? Okay. Mayor Bagley and uh, Council Member Peck, uh, you're referring to uh, the CIP electric aid to construction, is that correct? Correct. Okay, that is a sort of an annual line item in LPC's budget. And it covers uh, LBC uh, designs and builds all of the new electrical infrastructure for new development in the city. 
And so the aid to construction project is just that. It's to build um, infrastructure for new development. And so it's not specified for any particular house or, or business, but rather um, on like a subdivision kind of basis. Okay, thank you. That's what I didn't understand if it was only for commercial buildings or any kind of construction. So thank you. All um, construction. All construction. Okay, great. Um, the other one was, uh, actually this is for you again, Dale. It is about the um, RSVP. And I noticed that we still needed $56 million in 2024 to complete this project. My question is, and probably for uh, Jim Golden as well, are we escrowing for any of that money at all right now? Or are we gonna come up in 2024 and suddenly need $56 million? Do we have a path to get that money? So uh, Mayor Bagley and Council Member Peck, that's a great question. Um, we, we have any number of different strategies that we are trying to pursue. Um, uh, at the end of the day, um, our, first, our first goal, if you will, is to um, certainly get the next reach built, which is up to Boston. That is fully funded. And then the next reach from Boston Avenue to Sunset is the reach that we are finalizing all of our contracts and information with the Army Corps of Engineers. So that is also funded. So once we get to Sunset and go west from Sunset towards Hover, that's where we start to go into a deficit of funding. So one of the things the staff is working on right now is preparing a uh, grant application to FEMA. Um, and it's, um, it's a pretty substantial grant. It's in the, I, I, I believe over $10 million that we are looking for grant funding. Um, that's the kind of dollars that will get us up to Hover. Okay. Once we're at Hover Street, from Hover to airport, uh, we honestly do not have a, a real clear picture on that funding. But what's important is once you get to Hover and get across Hover, all of the city east of Hover Road, um, all of that area is, is protected from future flooding. It's removed from the floodplain. Okay. We, so, so the answer is a little bit of both. We got, we got, we're doing it incrementally, which is what we told the citizens that we would try to bring as much federal dollars and other dollars to this effort as we could. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there, there may need to be, say, an additional uh, bond issuance in the storm drainage uh, enterprise utility to complete the work. Okay, thank you. Uh, and with that, I'll move K. Second. It's been moved by Joan, seconded by Marcia. All in favor of consent agenda item K, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, item 10K uh, passes unanimously. Let's go ahead and go on to item G, resolution 2020-136. Dr. Waters, you pulled this. I did. Um, there's, I, I have no questions about the point that, that we're trying to make here. Um, it just seems to me that, that given uh, the message that we've already communicated and, and what we'd like to communicate and our appeal to other municipalities to join us uh, in a call on other elected officials to join us on the higher ground, um, the wording of the resolution might be a, a little more encouraging and a little less demanding. Uh, so I, as I looked at the resolution, uh, you have you have what what I would what I if it were just up to me, the, the language that, that I would put in the resolution, and if and if that was acceptable, then the letter that would go uh, out would reflect uh, a little bit of a softer approach to reflect the resolution. I'm assuming that the only vote that's going to occur here is on the resolution since the letter is over the mayor's signature and is up to the mayor. But if, but if the language in the letter uh, is gonna go out as, as it was written initially, then, then there's more discussion I'd like to have about that. But it just seems to me that, that, that the appeal both to other elected officials, other municipalities, and to the Weld County Commissioners, if we could um, uh, 
simply be more encouraging and less demanding, I think we might get a better response, at least from other municipalities. So you have in front of you what I would what I would recommend, and if you want a motion on that, Mayor, I'll make it or I'll defer to you. Whatever well, comments let, you let's want. hold up. Hold on, my my. I just got to plug in my computer real quick. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, guys. All right, Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge one thing is that in my opinion, I don't think that said letter or resolution will make any difference to the Weld County Commissioners. That being said, I think it's important that if we do move forward with a resolution, that we do move forward uh, as a unanimous body on it. Um, I actually do very much appreciate Council Member Waters' um, alterations of the text because I, I feel that that was probably one of the biggest culprits was the way it was written uh, and the way the media portrayed that in the backlash that the council has received. I feel that if it was less, especially considering it was a resolution, if it was, comp it was, if it was less demanding, I don't think we would have necessarily received the same backlash. Would we have received some? Of course, but I don't think we would have received the same amount. As such, I'm very much supportive if Council Member Waters uh, is saying that he'll only vote for this if the language is altered. I'm very much supportive of altering the language because again, I, I think the important part is uh, unanimity amongst the council members in this. And so I would actually like to move the resolution forward with the amended language provided by Councilmember Waters. I'll second that. Councilmember Peck. So my question is, if we amend this letter, can we uh, agree that we just amend it and send it as it is without having it come back to council for a, on a second reading? Yeah. Because that would be too late. It, it's it a resolution. It doesn't come uh, back on second reading. And I guess, and, and, and Mayor Pro Tem, who are you kidding? I, I, I caused the backlash. <laughs> I get that. And my whole point in doing so was to get people talking. Weld County ignored 23 mayors who sent a nice letter. And uh, they might resist. I don't expect them to do anything. But everybody in Weld County understood what we said. They can call us hypocrites. They can call us our fault at our fault. I'm, I don't even, I couldn't even put my finger on anything necessarily that Weld County citizens in and of themselves are doing. My whole point was, like him or not, we elected the governor, and he's the guy calling the shots right now. And so we've all got to be a unified body. That's it. And no one was paying attention. Now they are. So uh, I think it's a great idea. So anybody else have any other comments before we vote? All right. Do you want to move that since you pulled it, Dr. Waters? Uh, well, I think oh, we've actually, we actually moved it. Yeah, Mary Pro Tem already moved it, it, and I seconded it. All right, all in favor of Resolution 2020-136, say aye. 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 Vote, opposed, say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. Let's move on to... Can I just clarify, we approved the resolution as amended. Yes, it was as amended. And, and will you, since it's your letter... Will you um, do uh, whatever you do with the final version of the letter? I will. If there's a typo or a grammatical error, I will change it. But substantively, we're going to, the, the version that you drafted and corrected, that's what's going out with my signature. I have no problem with that. All right, let's go, uh, wrap this up with general business. Um, I actually move that we recess the Longmont City Council and convene as the Board of Commissioners of the Longmont Urban Renewal Authority. Second. All right, so we moved and seconded by Dr. Waters. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Aye. All right, let's go to item 12A, resolution LURA 2020-02, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the Longmont Urban Renewal Authority enacting a supplemental budget and making an additional appropriation for the expenses and liabilities of the authority for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All right. It's been moved by Councilmember Martin and seconded by Dr. Waters. All in favor of resolution LURA 2020-02, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 
All right, item 12A, resolution LURA 2020-02, passes unanimously. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn as the Board of Commissioners along with Urban Renewal Authority and reconvene as the City Council? So, so moved. Second. All right, it's been moved by Councilmember Peck, seconded by Councilmember Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Let's go on to Board and Commission appointments. So where is my, I, let's, uh, I just need to find my notebook because that's why I was late today. So I don't see it here. So can we just take a two minute break, please? Be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Mayor Bagley, is yeah, that something. your television in the background? You need to be muted if it is. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's somebody's watching TV in the next room. Yeah, I don't see you, Marcia. Where are you at? There she is. All right, so we go ahead and start with the airport advisory board. We sure can, Mayor. There are two positions available. For terms ending December 31st, 2023, we'll do these by motion since we are virtual. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just start moving. And then if you guys uh, have questions, comments, concerns, just say no. All right, I'm gonna move Richard Dean to serve as a regular member term ending December 31st, 2023. Councilor Christensen. And again, it hasn't been seconded, so no debate. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Now it's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Christensen. Can't we just put these people's names up and then vote on them? That's what we've done before. Instead, um, we don't have the information to pull up on the screen. We don't have ballots since we're in a virtual world. So when we yeah. did this mid year, we did this via motion and vote. Mm. Well, so, no, 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 yep. Since there are two regular members here, can we make it one motion to uh, move two people at once or? Well, we can do that on others, but it's, there's been a motion and a second. Okay. But, but uh, all in favor of Richard Dean, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Aye. All right, Richard Dean passes unanimously. 
Um, Joan, go ahead. I move that we appoint Russell Robinson to the oh, airport advisory board also. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Russell Robinson is appointed unanimously. Let's go ahead to Art and Public Places Commission. And this one has three unexpired terms, Mayor. I don't know if you want to right. do three individual votes or. Well, I think that uh, what well, I, I don't know. Let's let's just keep going one at a time. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to move Teresa Baxter. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. All right. So it's that passes six to one with Council Member uh, Christensen uh, objecting or dissenting. Um, anybody else? Or do you want me just to keep throwing them out? <laughs> I'm actually going to move uh, Jennifer Miller. Second. All right. All in favor of Jennifer Miller, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. All right. Passes six to one. With Councilmember Christensen dissenting, somebody want to vote? Move another one on that one, Councilmember Martin. I move Danielle Kevney. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Martin and seconded by Dr. Waters. All in favor of Danielle Kevney, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Then that passes unanimously as well. Looks like Teresa Baxter, Danielle Cavaney, and Jennifer Miller are, are in public places, folks. I'm going to move for the Callahan House that we appoint Karen Cruz and Ann Thompson to the two regular member terms ending December 31st, 2023. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, that passes unanimously. All right, let's go ahead and the Downtown Development Authority. Um, we've got three applicants and one person um, available to, to have the position. Anybody want to make a motion? Councilmember Peck? I move that we appoint Wes Parker to DDA. Second. All right. Any debate on this one? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. All right. Um, so that was who is who is nay? Me. Huh? Council Member Dago Faring. Mayor Pro Tem, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to say that because we don't normally take debate on these, we just normally vote that maybe we limit debate. I thought I I agree with you wholehearted. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I just saw a couple hands go up. So I could I didn't know if people were I was just trying to be polite. I didn't know if they were voting or if they were trying to get my attention. So, all right. So all in favor of Wes Parker, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, say nay. Aye. All right. That passes six to one with Councilmember Member Dago Faring in the dissent. All right, Golf Course Advisory Board. Does someone want to make a, make a motion? I'll move, uh, we appoint Justin Drake. Second. Good. All right, all in favor of Justin Drake, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. I move, um, I move we approve, approve or appoint Al Walden. Second. Second. All right. All, then Bush, all in favor of Al Walden, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Justin Drake and uh, Justin Drake and Al Walden um, are appointed unanimously to the regular member terms ending December 31st, 2023. Let's go on to Housing and Human Services Advisory Board. Three regular regular members ending December 31st, 2023. Um, I was gonna ask Councilmember Christensen. I would move uh, Caitlin Abbott. Second. All in favor of Caitlin Abbott, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. I'm gonna actually move Kimberly Strang. Second. Second. All in favor of Kimberly Strang, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Kimberly Strang passes unanimously. Councilor Christensen. I would move Deanna Blair. I'll second okay. that. All in favor, say aye for Deanna Blair. Aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 
All right, that passes unanimously for Deanna Blair. Caitlin Abbott, Deanna Blair, and Kimberly Strang are appointed to the three regular member terms ending December 31st, 2023. All right, um, Master Board of Appeals. Um, uh, do we have a motion for who will serve the ultimate member? I actually move Adam Goldstone to be the ultimate member. Okay, do we have a second? I move Don Russell as the alternate member. Uh, I would second both of those. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're going to appoint all four. But who yeah. who who want anyone want to make a motion for the alternate member? I don't have a preference. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move Adam Goldstone then as the the alternate. Second. All right, all in favor of Adam Goldstone being the alternate alternate member, term ending 12-31-2023, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Adam Goldstone has appointed the alternate member unanimously, and I'm also gonna move Don Russell, Andy Ulmer, and Chris Boswig to be appointed the three regular member terms ending 12-31-2023. Second. All right, it's, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Don Russell, Andy Ulmer, and Chris Boswig are hereby uh, unanimously appointed to the three regular member terms ending 12, 20, 12 31, 23. All right, let's go on to the MOP, MOPC pension board. Um, I'm going to actually, uh, uh, Councilmember Christensen. I would move Kathy Copella. I'll second that. All in favor of Kathy Copella, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Uh, that passes unanimously, and Kathy Cropella is appointed to the unexpired regular term ending June 30th, uh, 2023. All right, let's go to the Museum Advisory Board. Uh, Susie Doggo Faring, she moves Caldonia Cordova, and I'll second that. I, I do, actually, oh. <laughs> but I was going to say I'll move Caldonia Cordova for the record. I, I'll second that. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. All right, so uh, it passes six to one with Council Member Christensen uh, in the uh, dissent. All right, let's go on to what is personal privilege. Sure, Mayor, it's your house. Could you please have the volume turned down because it's very distracting for the rest of us? All right, the uh, I've, I've turned it down, but I ha I, I'm about a year about a year ago. I decided that I'm not going to impact my personal life for council anymore. So I'll resign before I tell my family to stop their behavior activities based on council anymore. But I've turned it down. Let's go ahead and do planning and zoning. We'll come back to parks and rec. That one could get messy. All right. Do we have a motion for one uh, one regular member term ending December thirty first, twenty twenty five? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move Judson Height. All right, I'll second that. All right, all in, fa all in favor of Judson Height, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Judson Height is hereby appointed a regular member term ending December 31st, 2025. All right, let's go ahead and move on to alternate member terms ending December 31st, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move Selena Kohler. Second. Second. All right. All in favor of Selena Kohler? Aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. All right. Selena Kohler is appointed an alternate member uh, ending December 31st, 2022. Unanimously. Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I move Ana Lukachi as an alternate member. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Anna Lukachi is hereby appointed an alternate. And then we need one more. I'm gonna actually move Jerry Boone. Second. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, nay. All right, uh, Judson Height is the regular member and then Jerry Boone, Selena, uh, Kohler and Anna Lukachi are appointed to alternate member terms ending December 31st, 2022. All right. Okay, let's go on to Senior Citizens Advisory Board. Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, go ahead, Councilman Martin. Yeah, uh, there are only uh, two positions. Uh, I move Sheila Conroy and Julie Hauser. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Say nay. All right. Then Sheila Conroy and Julie Hauser are appointed unanimously to two or each to a regular member term ending December 31st, 2023. Sustainability Advisory Board. I'm going to actually move Kimberly Rankins. Second. Second. All right. Uh, Councilmember Christensen, it's your board. Did you have a comment or were you going to propose someone? No, I was going to propose Lynette McLean. Okay. Well, we've got a motion on the floor. Yeah. All right. All in favor for Kimberly Rankin, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 Raise your hand if you're a nay. All right. So the motion fails uh, three to four. All right. Councilmember Christensen. I would move uh, Lynette McLean. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Nay, say nay. 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 All right, so raise your hand if you're a nay. All right, the motion fails. Mayor Pro Tem, do you have a motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move Catherine or Kay Volmeyer. I'll second that. All in favor of Catherine Volmeyer, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 All right, raise your hand if you're nays. All right, the motion carries five to two with council members uh, Idago Faring and Peck in the dissent. Visit Longmont board. I'm gonna actually move Stacy Litwin. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded that Stacy Litwin served the regular term ending December 31st, 2023. Say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. Any other, raise your hand if you're a nay. All right, the motion carries six to one. Um, let's see here. And yeah, so Stacy Litwin's it. Let's move back to Parks and Rec Advisory Board. We've got three regular terms ending December 31st, 2023. Mr. Mayor, I move Dan Olson. I'll second that. All in favor is Dan Olson, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Dan Olson is appointed a regular term ending December 31st, 2023, unanimously. I'm going to move Scott Conlon. Second. All right, all in favor of Scott Conlon, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 All right, raise your hand if you're a nay. Will you, okay, so it passes five to two with Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez and Councilmember Christensen in the dissent. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. I move Nicholas Novello. Second. All right. I'll, all in favor of Nicholas Novello, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Nicholas Novello is appointed unanimously. All right. Um, that means Scott Conlin, Nicholas Novello, and Dan Olson are hereby appointed three or a regular member terms ending December 31st, 2023. Did we miss anything, Don? We did not. Thank you, Mayor and Council. All righty. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, I, and Marcia, what I said earlier was not to be disrespectful or snarky. It's just that we're in COVID at home and I can't have people locked in their rooms and uh, they've given up enough because of my political uh, hobby. So I just, I, 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 they, they voluntarily turned it down, but I just, I just am really hesitant to make anybody do anything now. All right, so let's go ahead to mayor and council comments. I'm oh, sorry, no, final call public invited to be heard. It's a regular session tonight. So let's go ahead and take a two minute break and see who calls in. Back in three. Don, are you there? I am. Um, could you send John Fryer uh, what the the edited uh, resolution and and letter? Absolutely, sure Thank will. You. I also asked Marika and Sandy to do that. I don't know if they've done it. Yeah, I got a text from John.
I think that was only two, but. We'll give the uh, live stream just a few more seconds to get caught up. Currently, we have no one in our waiting room. Okay. Well, then we'll go ahead and close final call public invited to be heard. And when everybody's back, we'll go on with mayor and council comments. Let's wait till they're all back. You'll go first, Councilmember Christensen. I just want you, I want the other three to hear your words of wisdom. All right, Councilmember Christensen. So nobody will have to deal with us for another couple of weeks. Yay. I just want to wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, every holiday that you're celebrating and please stay healthy and take care of your family. Thanks. Dr. Waters, and then Councilman uh, Frank. Yeah, I should probably just be, shut up and extend <laughs> season greetings as well, but I'm gonna make one more appeal um, that, we, that we take a, a, a serious thought, give serious thought, to a better approach and process to this whole process we just went through of appointing board and commission members. And it's, you know, it's not worth doing tonight. I just, to, to interview 47 people on a Saturday and to go through this process tonight, when we could have had boards and commissions interview, recommend their finalists to us who we would then interview so that they would get our blessing from the people who know best what boards and commissions need. It just doesn't make sense in terms of any kind of good practice to get people with the right skill sets and dispositions in the positions that are needed on boards and commissions. So I won't say any more now, but I just think before we do this again, it, we, we need to rethink our role in this. And that is the closest thing that you will hear Tim Waters saying Merry Christmas. That was <laughs> Merry <Dr>. Christmas <laughs> and Happy New Year to yeah, all. Yes, Merry Christmas to you too, Dr. Waters. Councilmember Martin. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. I would just like to urge that people have a safe and constrained holiday. Stay in your pods, keep your family safe, um, save your nickels and dimes for a really fine party next year. Um, please keep us all safe. Councilmember Peck, I think I skipped you. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yes, I just want to also wish everyone a happy holidays, but also take some time to drive around Longmont and look at the incredible lights. The lights on Roosevelt, Roosevelt Park are amazing. And I have noticed that people have come out more with more lights, more festivities, more fun. And I think it is probably a result of being in our homes so much that it's a good way to express holiday feelings, joy, happiness. So um, see you next year. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, first, I might suggest that maybe not this year, obviously, but next year or, or something, the council schedule a social airing of grievances, festivist like. I think that would be entertaining. Um, Either way, I do also want to say, uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody, as well as don't forget uh, to continue in as safely as you possibly can, support our small businesses uh, through via Christmas shopping, holiday shopping, uh, getting your food, uh, takeout, uh, whatever is safest and best idea for you and your household. But please continue to support our small businesses. Thank you. That includes a wrestling match, though. If we're going to do it right, we wrestle. Um, and make sure we have the right pole. And, and the right pole. Council Member Hidalgo Faring. I really like that idea. I have a ton of grievances I want to hear. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, you know, I just, I want to wish everybody a very safe and happy holiday. 
Um, one thing that I've learned or one thing that a good thing that has happened out of all this and here I am in quarantine. I have my teaching stuff here. So I'm actually now teaching from home. So I haven't left this spot since 730 this morning. And uh, <laughs> but um, to wish everybody a very safe and happy holiday with your family. Um, we have really connected as a family in ways that, you know, we haven't in years. So that's, that's something I can be grateful for. Um, and I'm hoping that that is the case with many of you out there. Um, this is a very, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of families. I've worked with a lot of folks who, you know, this is a very difficult time. And, you know, just, you know, I'm trying to be really patient with people that I come across and just trying to, you know, understand that not everyone is coming from my, my perspective, that everybody's having their own burdens and stresses. And so kind of practice that forgiveness. Um, among each other and practicing that hard with my significant other and my kids and and my neighbors and and other friends and family so you know that's that's the message i want to sh share out with everybody and something that i've been doing with small businesses is we've made the commitment as a family to either donate to a nonprofit, or um, you know groups that have been hit really hard are the arts community. So just, you know, sometimes I'll just throw, throw in a 20 or wherever I can, you know, I've been fortunate that we could do that as a family. Um, plus I also recently broke it to my kids that um, that's their Christmas gift. <laughs> We're local, um, donating to local businesses and, and um, yeah, and every day we just kind of spend our, spend our money somewhere, somewhere local. So I've been really good about posting things, but lately I just, I, I haven't, but still every day we're putting a little something out there to the community. So wishing everybody the best. All right, great. I just wanna say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that kind of stuff. And I hope that uh, come January, the world treats you one another a hell of a lot better than they did this year. And uh, I'm just, I'm ashamed to be human almost if the vitriol and the hatred that people have conveyed to one another over politics. It's just all, it's mind blowing to me. So I'm gonna to try to forget all that. Hopefully when we come back in a couple of weeks, it will somehow miraculously change, but I doubt it. So, all right, do we have a, a, a city manager who wants to make some comments? Yeah, first I wanna say um, happy holidays to everyone. Um, thanks for another year. This one has been challenging for all of us. Um, and looking positive that, tw you know, 21 will be um, a better year as we continue to move forward as a community. But Joni also wants to introduce you to our new planning director. Joni. Thanks, Harold Mayor and Council. Um, I wanted to welcome and introduce the Council to Glenn Van Dimwegen. Glenn um, is our new planning director, and I wrote you an email several weeks ago that he would be uh, starting this month. So for me, that's going to make 2021 already seem a whole lot better. So um, Glenn is on this evening um, and has sat in on the last couple of council meetings and will be uh, coming to planning commission tomorrow night as well. Um, Glenn, I don't know if you want to say anything or give a shout out, but either way. <laughs> I'm just thrilled to be here. That's, I'll leave it at that. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you. No more comments, Mayor Council. Eugene, why are you in a Mayor. tie? Why are you in a tie, Eugene? You, you looking for a raise or something? I was dispensing justice this morning at the municipal court. Dispense it, my friend. Dispense. Nice. So, happy and safe holidays to everyone. That's it, Mayor. All right, great. Do we have a motion to conclude this meeting? So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of concluding and then reconvening in what? Three weeks from today? Right? Three weeks. No, okay. no council member for two weeks, council meeting for two weeks. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay. All right. Cool. Then I will see you guys in three. All right. Later, guys. Bye.